The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Once more, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fatted calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, the wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go, therefore, into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the banquet prepared. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad, so the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, the invitations are in the uh, mailbox, if you might imagine that, and they say, you're invited. And uh, some of us probably have them in our computers, and uh, they arrive and they tell us we're all invited to a huge party, and and, uh, God is the host. Uh, I particularly like the ones that come through the mail. I, uh, I have to say, if I, if I was counting days, that is just the most incredible news in the world, that uh, as God tells us the story of, uh, of the end time and of the kingdom of God, and he tells us that we're invited to a party. Thanks be to God. Uh, I suppose a lot of us like a good party, I, uh, I suspect for some of you it's much easier than others to put on a party. I, I don't know that I do it well, uh, but some of you really have great gifts. You uh, plan really well. In, in today's uh, lesson from Isaiah, we're told that uh, everyone is invited. Five times in three verses, Isaiah says, all, uses the word all, all are invited. I uh, look at the lesson from uh, Matthew, and I see that Matthew had a list that he started with, and, uh, and they weren't able to make it, and they uh, refused the invitation, and so uh, he, uh, he went out and uh, searched others that would be able to enjoy the fine wine and the food and uh, be able to take advantage of what had been planned to be a really great party. But he can't help but notice that there's a person there who apparently didn't quite get the message about what the dress code would be, and uh, they seem to be a bit of a misfit. Um, For you, hosting a party might be easy. I, uh, I notice that it is, in some ways, makes us a little bit vulnerable. You know, like, like, who do we invite? Will they say yes? Do we have the right food? Do we have the right drink? Uh, is the music playing? Did Father Norm turn it up too loud? Are we, are we ready? And, uh, and what do we do? What do we do if uh, some people turn us down? I mean, after the party, we're, we're probably going to try to uh, gauge if it was a success. Did, did everybody seem to have a good time? Did they eat all the food? Did, uh, did so-and-so seem to be okay with this person? And uh, did the seating work out all right? Or maybe that was just thrown out. Maybe, uh, maybe I, I'm wondering, did I spend enough time with everybody? Do you think everybody felt comfortable? You know, I... Uh, 
And then you, you have to wonder, you, you're letting people into your home, maybe. You're inviting people into your home. I wonder what they're going to think of our home. Uh, do they know about the junk drawer? Are they, uh, are they aware that uh, just before they came over, ran through the house and rushed through and uh, cleaned off all the counters and, and put everything in, in a drawer? I wonder if they have one like that. I, uh, I mean, I wonder. You know, and if you're clergy, then, you know, you kind of, you kind of wonder if, if it's okay that the way you live, you know, is it, is it all right? Yeah. I, uh, I realize right now I, I, I don't live in a, in a good place uh, for uh, being a rector. I, I live on the third floor of a walk-up. It's not user-friendly for everybody. So when I think about throwing a party, I think about where would I, you know, where would I throw it and finding another place to throw it. Just the, the home isn't appropriate right now. I, uh, I noticed too that I think that, that guests probably uh, wrestle with some questions too. Like, uh, do we accept this invitation? Are we, are we, we're really kind of busy. Is it okay to say we're too busy? Is it? Uh, do we have the right thing to wear? When we were in Connecticut at Christmas time, you had to have a Christmas sweater. Uh, it was just standard uniform for, for uh, a, a man living in uh, Greenwich, Connecticut, and there were a lot of Christmas parties. You had to have the right Christmas sweater, and it was just became part of the, part of the fair. And, uh, and then you're, you, know, you would have the opportunity to bring something kind of delicious to the party, and um, when I was a curate, when I was, uh, you know, quite a bit lower on the food chain as a clergy person, uh, it was hard to afford to bring some of the fine things that people would bring to, uh, to a feast. And so sometimes being a guest is, is a little bit difficult. I, I, you know, they're such wonderful people. I know they, I know they never thought of that. It wasn't intentional, but it was, it was challenging sometimes, just, you know, trying to trying to be a guest. So I think, so I think hospitality it involves some risk. It involves some risk for the host, and it involves some risk for the guest. And, uh, and in today's gospel, Matthew has an incredible gift. Uh, Matthew is one of those writers. He's constantly inviting us to step into the story and imagine ourselves part of this narrative. You know, so, so now we're invited and uh, we're, we're invited to the party. And, uh, and you know, one might kind of wonder, um, were we part of the first wave of invitations? <laughs> or was it the second wave? Were we the chosen or were we the all? And uh, that's, uh, I, don't, I don't know how much it matters, but uh, I, I, you know, and I wonder what, I actually wonder what God's jokes are like. I, I want to I know what it's like to hang out with God at a party and, and, and listen to some, uh, some jokes. I think I've already heard some of God's jokes or experienced some of them, but, you know, where do you fit in? Do you have the right thing to wear? Does God expect, is God going to expect me to have a Christmas sweater? You know, are we going to have the right thing to wear when we go to God's party? And uh, then I think about on the other side, who's going to be invited, you know? Who will be invited? And then, why are they invited? And I'm not invited. You know, why do some people get invited to some parties and others don't get invited to them? I don't know if you've ever experienced this. I have. Uh, I know what it feels like to not be invited to a party, and I, and I, and I bet you do too. And, uh, and that's a little awkward. That feels, uh, that feels pretty uncomfortable. It's hard to be rejected. So maybe there is a whole lot more than looking at hospitality 101, but kind of getting to the, getting more deeply into hospitality and, and looking at, you know, the experience of people that uh, don't feel worthy to be invited, the people that... Uh, that hear the all but don't think that could mean them.
everybody is invited, but somehow I don't think you're talking about me. Those people exist. So let's not get all caught up on ourselves for a minute. What difference does it make that God chooses a feast, a party, as an example of what it means, what it means to come to the kingdom of God? What does it mean to be in the... uh, how can, you know, it's so intentional. What a great, what a great message. I love it. I love it. You know, the God puts God's self out there too. God puts God's self out there in a way that, you know, how does God feel if we turn down the invitation? We're invited to the party. Everybody's invited. And now we have the option to turn God down. We don't want to, you know, hmm, don't know. Got something else going on. I have to say, I, I was brought to tears at the beginning of the service when I, when I saw Alex Perkins here. I, uh, you know, I know I was meeting with someone in between services talking about how, how people choose or how it is that they choose to come to church or not to come to church and, uh, and what informs that decision. And, uh, and then I look out and I see Alex Perkins and I see, I see a saint who has an opportunity to be at the party, <laughs> come to the celebration, join the feast, and, uh, and I teared up. It's, what a beautiful sight. Thank you. So it is through God's presence. It is through God's presence in Emmanuel, in Jesus, in God with us, that we're all invited. You know, we're invited to the party. Save the date. Don't be among those who opt for a better opportunity. But, you know, in the end, God's not going to give up. God won't give up until that dining room's full, even embarrassingly full. We're elbow to elbow crawling all over each other. God's not going to give up until that party is, is roaring. So I encourage you, save the date, and it's going to be one heck of a good party. Amen.